Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crap, it's crap, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. Recently I bought this flip clock. I reckon the numbers and the mechanism look pretty good, but I don't think much of the surround. So in this video, I'm going to make a new case for it. There's some strange shapes in the design and I would have shared it with you before I begin, but I couldn't make those shapes in SketchUp and they're not that easy to show in a regular sketch either. I'll start by preparing some camphor laurel and I'll try and get through that quick and get into the project. That's the sides of the case prepared. Now I need some corner pieces to join them together. All the camphor laurel that I have isn't thick enough for these pieces. I will glue another piece to them, but I'll do that later on. The corner pieces start out pretty simple. They just have 45 degree cuts on either end. To join all the pieces together I'm using splines, I'll leave them exposed on the front of the case and that should be an interesting element. Start off the new year right and join the Makers Mob for a full month of live events happening throughout January starting on January the 7th 2021 where you can learn to build woodworking projects from the makers themselves. In these live events, Jimmy Duresta, John Peters, the Samurai Carpenter and Adam Henkel will be walking you through some of their most popular projects. Sign up is absolutely free and you can find that by clicking the link in the description below. That's the grooves cut, now I'll make some splines. I cut the grooves in the wrong edges in this piece, but I have just enough stock left to make another one. Now I'll glue an extra piece to the corners to give me enough material to round the corners over. I need to cut two tapers on the outside, but I'll do that after it's glued together. But this one on the inside, I need to cut that one now. And there is a rebate as well I need to cut out, but I'll work that out and do that later on. None of these tapers are necessary, but hopefully it should look pretty good and it should look more interesting than just straight sides. Now that I've worked out where the rebate needs to go, I'll cut that next.
The rebate needs to continue into the corner pieces and I'll do that with hand tools. It doesn't need to be neat as they'll never be seen, they just need to provide enough clearance. This next task has had me scratching my head. I need to continue the taper around the inside corners and again, I'm going to resort to hand tools. I got them all pretty close, now I'll put the case together and blend the corners into the sides. They really weren't as difficult as I thought they'd be. The case on the original clock is open but I want to put a piece of perspex in the front of mine to keep the dust out, so next I need to cut grooves for that. The straight sides are easy enough, but the corners will be more challenging again. That's the grooves done and ready for a piece of perspex. I want everything on the inside of the perspex to be black so I'm painting that before I put it together. I thought this would be a tricky glue up so I decided to do it in two stages by gluing the splines to the corner pieces first. When they were set I cleaned up the squeeze out and finished gluing up the rest of the case. I'm not sure that was the best plan, a couple of the splines didn't seat all the way and I had to tinker with them to get them to fit the side pieces but I got there in the end. 
I'm taking a chance that I'll be able to remove the protective paper from the perspex, especially around the edges where it seats into the groove. Now I'm cutting tapers on the outside of the case and to do that I've set up this temporary fence and angled the blade over. I thought I'd try the corners too and it worked a treat, they just need sanding smooth. That's the front tape is done, now on to the back ones and for those I needed to hire the blade. It's rocking a little and not sitting flat on the underneath taper. I designed it this way so the clock face would be slightly angled up. While I'm sanding it I'll sand the underneath taper more to make it bigger and it should sit better then. I'm freshening up the paint and being careful not to flood the paint into the grooves for the perspex. I'm starting to get worried but I really do hope this paper comes out. I got most of it but there were a couple of bits left. I'll finish the outside then hopefully remove the rest of the paper then. For the finish I'm using Whittle Wax's hard wax oil. There were a couple of bits that I couldn't get to so I had to resort to trimming them. It's a shame it's not perfect but it isn't too noticeable. I should have made the groove a touch wider and it wouldn't have been a problem. Before I fit the clock I just need to make a window and that sits inside the rebate and frames the clock face.
I reckon that came out pretty awesome, all but the edges on the Perspex, but I'm super happy with the design. Even though the clock is heavier now, these hanging slots look sturdy enough. I could reinforce them, but I tried it on the wall anyway. It looks okay on the wall, but I think I prefer it sitting on a surface, so I think this one is going to go over to the house. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to come back tomorrow for the next episode of the 7 Day Scrapwood Challenge.